Hey everyone, if you don't know me, my name is Luke Stevens, but if you followed me here from other socials, you might know me as Hack Luke. I'm an ex-web developer and I'm an ex-penetration tester and uh, now I'm a bug bounty hunter and also as my day job, I'm currently working for Bugcrowd, that is a bug bounty platform and uh, yeah, so my life's pretty much just filled with bug bounties all day, every day. So in today's video, I just wanted to lay out 10 bite-sized actionable tips for people who are just coming into bug bounties now and they want to increase their chances of being successful as quickly as possible. So as the title says, 10 tips for crushing bug bounties in your first 12 months. So stick around until the end for what I think are the best tips. But before we start, let me get this out there right now. Starting bug bounties from nothing can be very difficult. Um, and anyone who is successful in bug bounties did start from nothing, so they know this. Um, being successful in this space requires a lot of hard work and persistence, right? So even if you're, that's even if you're coming from a security background, like I did, I came from being a penetration tester straight into bug bounties, and it was quite difficult when I first started. Uh, so if you're coming here and you're just starting bug bounties, but you're doing it because you're expecting to earn like five figures every month from the day one, then you'll need to reset your expectations because, um, or at least you will in the short term until you get into the swing of things. There's some good news though. Um, if you put in the work and you continue to push yourself and expand your knowledge and grow, then buckle up because it's going to be a crazy mind-blowing experience for you and the bug bounty space is a very exciting progressive space to be in right now and i absolutely love it i think you will too so let's get into it here are the 10 tips tip number 10 you need to actually start okay it's going to seem super obvious but this is the hardest thing for most people to do, right? They say they want to start doing bug bounties. They might ask people, they might actually read some things about bug bounties, but they never actually start. So there are a whole heap of reasons why this might happen. And I talked about, I've already talked about them in, in um, one of my other videos, which is titled how to start. Um, but yeah, to sum that whole video up, basically just do it, just start. You need to, you need to actually take action and start. There's, there's, there needs to like, it's, it's like this leap, right? From reading stuff and kind of like asking people stuff and whatever to actually doing it. It's so important that you take that leap. Even if you don't feel ready, take the leap and just start doing it. Tip number nine, when you are starting out, hack where there's less competition. So the most effective way that I've found to do this is to always be on the lookout for fresh targets. And uh, there are many, many different ways to identify fresh targets. And there are also um, many different ways in which a target can be fresh. For example, um, a new program might be released. So in that case, you would hack on that because it's fresh. There might also be a new target that's added within the program. Um, there might be new subdomains showing up that are in scope. Um, in your scans within that program, there might be a new IP address range that's been assigned to that company. Um, and it's like a more open scope program. So that would be in scope. Um, maybe the company makes an acquisition and acquisitions are in scope. Um, there might be changes to DNS records. So you might be pointing at a fresh host. Um, you can monitor for changes in HTTP responses, like significant changes. Um, it might be that, uh, that that endpoint has changed to some other service or that they've refurbished their website or something like that. Um, and another one is open ports. So if you find that there's a brand new port that's been opened, go and check out that port because that's something that's fresh that other people might not have hit yet. Basically, the whole point is if you're hitting fresh targets, things that have just changed or things that have just popped up, there's a good chance that you're one of the first few people that is looking at that target. And if there's a vulnerability there, especially if it's like something that's like low hanging fruit, you're gonna be the first one to see it, hopefully. So that's the point of that. Tip number eight, do what you're good at. If you're coming into bug bounties and you already have a skill, like maybe it's, maybe you're really good at 
web stuff or maybe you're good at mobile stuff or recon or binary or hardware or IoT or car hacking even, whatever it is, you're most likely going to have the most success focusing on that because you'll be starting the game with significantly more experience than most others in that particular area. For example, if someone's starting bug bounties and their name is Joe Blogs, say, and they're an absolute veteran in Android application development, right? And they wanna start doing bug bounties. Well, they should focus on hacking Android apps because they're gonna have more success there than most people, right? There's there's a caveat to that though. Um, I also think that everyone should kind of expand their knowledge, right? It's always good to try things that you're not good at because that's actually an effective way to improve. So I'm all about growth. I think we should all be um, learning and growing every single day. So if you only stick to one thing, then while it might be successful, more successful for you financially, it might uh, hinder your growth in the long run. So that's something that you'll need to weigh up yourself. Tip number seven, know the basics. So some people that come to me asking about how to do bug bounties have almost no basic knowledge about hacking. If this is you, it is imperative to have at least good fundamental knowledge in things like the OWASP top 10, um, basic networking, like what an IP address is, things like that. And um, I think it's also important to at least be kind of familiar with um, the, a command line interface, whether that's in Linux or Windows, whatever. Um, just a side note on this topic, many people try to shortcut the foundational knowledge and just focus on the new and shiny stuff. This likely will not go well for you. So put it this way, if you were trying to build a skyscraper, the first thing you would do is put foundations deep into the ground, right? And without those foundations or those footings, the skyscraper can't be very tall without falling over. Similarly, um, just to link that back to what we're talking about, if you try and skip to advanced concepts without knowing the basics, you are just restricting your potential to learn. When you try and stack on all these advanced concepts, but you lack the basics, it's going to topple over. You, you, you just cannot have those advanced concepts under your belt without first knowing the fundamentals. Tip number six, take care of your health. So a huge contributor to your success in bug bounties is going to be your motivation levels and your ability to learn. Neither of these things will be at their peak if you aren't looking after your health. So try to take regular breaks, eat healthy food, get enough sleep and exercise. That's all I'm gonna say on that. There are so many resources out there about avoiding burnout and about um, keeping your mental health good when you're working in IT. Um, bug bounties are no exception. You need to do this. Tip number five, get involved with the community. So, so much of the information that's helped me to find bugs has stemmed from my involvement with the bug bounty community online. If you spend enough time in that community, you'll notice that there are so many like keen, amazing people who are just like really willing to discuss ideas and concept with you to help you on your journey. So it's important to remember that community involvement, I feel at least is is a very important part of um, bug bounties. But in any healthy community, um, we can't just take, we have to also give back. So don't be one of those people who um, is not really involved with the community. They're just kind of like leeching. They're always like getting information from people. It's important that you give back as well. So even if you're a total beginner, you can, you can write blog posts, you can post on Twitter, you can do a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever, and you can share things like your progress, your, any, any fears that you have, um, your, your achievements, minor wins, things that you're learning, um, and any goals that you have. Sharing those kind of things with the community is super helpful. And then um, when you go to take from the community, um, you're not just taking, you're also giving back. So whatever you give, I promise it will come back to you tenfold. That's one of the laws of the universe, right? Tip number four, 
collaboration. So um, I was tempted to put community and collaboration in one point, but I do feel that they're different. And that's because when I talk about collaboration, I'm talking about collaborating with like a few people, maybe one person, two people, three people, whatever. And when I talk about community, I'm talking about your involvement with the bug bounty community as a whole. So now we're talking about collaboration. I have had so much value out of collaborating with a few of my friends in bug bounties. Two or three minds is always going to be better than one mind. It's it's an absolute no-brainer, but it comes with this warning as well. You need to make sure that the people you are collaborating with are the right people. And I think that open collaboration where all parties are equally involved and all parties are kind of giving the same amount of energy and resources to that collaboration, I think that is really important because there are some um, instances that I've read about. I certainly haven't experienced this myself, but um, I've, I've heard about other people having these experiences where they go to collaborate and then um, they might give up a bunch of information or whatever um, or t- techniques or tools that they've written to this other person to collaborate and they get nothing back and the other person's super closed. So make sure that you're collaborating with good people. Make sure that there's like a mutual benefit there and that everybody wins from that collaboration. That is super important. Tip number three, quality educational resources, right? When you're starting out, it can be super difficult to know which resources are high quality, good resources that are giving valid information and which resources kind of suck, right? So I'm just going to recommend two resources that really helped me a lot. I'm not getting paid by them, no affiliate links, nothing like that. These are just two resources that are actually legitimately very high quality resources. Once you've consumed these, you should be able to, I think, um, you'll have the necessarily necessary knowledge to better determine for yourself the quality of any resources that you come across in future. Okay, so start with these two. The first one is Pentester Lab, which is a, a stack of hands-on labs. Uh, each lab will help you to understand and exploit various vulnerabilities. Um, it's good to know that they actually have some free labs that you can download and try before you sign up for a premium account. So you can really like get a feel for um, the service before you buy it, right? The second resource I'm going to recommend is the Web Application Hackers Handbook. It's an absolute staple for web app hacking. Um, and it's just an excellent foundational book for learning how to hack web applications, right? Number two, automation. So the reason behind this being so high on my list is simple. Automation, the time that you spend automating things has an excellent return on investment, right? You have limited hours um, each day or each week to spend hacking on bounties. And when we're doing bug bounties, unlike a pen test, um, we're not getting billed by the hour. We're getting billed by the bugs that we find, right? So we want to find the most bugs possible. Um, So it's important that the things you spend time doing provide the most bugs or the most value back to you. So automation is really good for this because everything you automate, you can do over and over again. You can just get your, your VPS or your computer or whatever to just perform that task over and over again on lots of different hosts. Anything that you automate like that in the long run is going to save you hours, days, weeks, months, years, whatever. And um, some things simply aren't possible to do manually. If you wanted to check 3 million hosts for a particular vulnerability, you don't want to run that script 3 million times. You need automation to do that for you, right? So what kind of things should you be automating? I would say anything that takes significant time and can be automated relatively easy. So it depends, you know, if, if something takes one second to do manually, it might not be worth automating. If something takes half an hour to do manually and you can automate that, if you spend like a few days coding up some solution to automate that, you're going to save yourself an hour every time you need to do it. Okay. So I think that automation is super, super valuable. And tip number one, be persistent. 
So when you first start doing bug bounties, it is so easy to feel like an absolute failure for a while. Trust me though, if you're persistent and you continue to expand your knowledge, eventually you'll start to find bugs. I, I honestly believe that most of the successes that I've enjoyed in my life in general have been the result of me simply being more persistent than everyone else at that particular thing, right? Anyway, once you start finding bugs, you will also need to maintain that persistence to continue finding bugs. And obviously, your uh, capacity and your willingness to be persistent is 100% dependent on not just like your willpower, but a bunch of other things like your physical and mental health. So it's important to take care of those things too, like we mentioned back in one of the other tips. I really hope you enjoyed that. That was my top 10 tips for crushing your first 12 months as a bug hunter. If you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and push the bell notification icon so that you get notifications when I post new videos. Until the next video, stay safe, keep hacking, keep growing. And if you're just getting started on your bug bounty journey, good luck, you've got this.